Are you ready to take your Minecraft videos to the next level? Well, you're in luck because today I'm going to show you how to create the legendary Minecraft text effect in Adobe Illustrator. It's super easy to do and you're going to love the results. So far up Illustrator and let's get started. Okay, so once you're in Illustrator, create a new document. The document size I'm using is 1920 by 1080 pixels. And then you want to go ahead and set up the following colour swatches so they're accessible within the colour swatches panel. Once you've set up the colour swatches, next thing you want to do is using the type tool, create two individual text elements, one for the word Minecraft and then one for the word Legends. For the Minecraft font, I'm using a font called Minecrafter 3 and for the Legends font, I'm using a font simply called Minecraft. I'll put a link in the description for both fonts, so be sure to check those out. Convert both text elements to an outline by right clicking and going to create outlines. And for now, we're going to move the Minecraft text to the top left corner so we can mainly work on the Legends text. Once you've converted the Legends text to an outline, make sure it's selected, then go to Object, Ungroup, just so we can work on each individual character separately. Now, if I remember correctly, the Legends text starts from the center and gets bigger as it goes out so we're going to manipulate some of the individual characters to give it the legends look so firstly i'm going to select the l e and the g and i'm just going to move these out the way and i'm going to do the same with the n d and the s and then i'm just going to zoom into the e then start moving the other letters back in so we can evenly space them out so i've moved the letter n right next to the letter e and then I'm going to hold shift and then use the right arrow key to move it across 10 pixels. And then I'm going to do the same with the letter G. Obviously this is easy if you've got smart guides enabled. If you haven't and you don't know where to go to enable those, go to view and then select smart guides. So with the G in place, again select it, hold the shift key and then use the left arrow key to move it across 10 pixels. Then select the direct selection tool and then drag a selection around the bottom anchor points of the letter N. Hold the shift key and then we just want to move that down until the bottom of the N matches up with the bottom letter of the G. Next we want to bring in the letter D and just move that to the edge of the N. Hold shift key and select the right arrow key to nudge that across. And then using the direct selection tool, make a selection around the bottom half of the D, making sure that all the bottom anchor points are selected. Hold down the shift key and select the down arrow key once just to nudge that down. And we can get, again, we can do the same with the letter E. Position it next to the letter G. Hold down the shift key, use the left arrow key to nudge it across 10 pixels. Using the direct selection tool, drag a selection around the bottom half of the letter E and then we want to move this down holding the shift key until it touches the bottom of the letter G and then while the anchor points are still selected hold down the shift key and use the down arrow key to nudge those points down 10 pixels. While the direct selection tool is still selected we can also select the center part of the E and select the bottom two anchor points. Hold the shift key and use the up arrow key just to make that more square. Then finally we can bring in our last two letters and then with the S we want to match this up with the top part of the letter N. Move it to the end edge of the letter D, hold down the shift key and use the right arrow key once to nudge that across 10 pixels. Then using the direct selection tool make a selection around the bottom half of the S and then we want to drag that down until it matches the bottom part of the D and then hold down the shift key and select the down arrow key just to nudge that down by 10 pixels. And then we can do the same with the top part of the S. So selecting those top few anchor points, hold down the shift key and then use the up arrow key once just to nudge that up by 10 pixels. I'm also going to add a tail to the letter S. So using the rectangle tool, I'm just going to create a simple square which matches the height of the bottom part of the letter S. And then I'm just going to extend this up about halfway and then I'm going to do the same with the top part of the S. Moving the letter L so it matches the bottom part of the E. Nudge it 10 pixels to the left, then using the direct selection tool, make a selection around all the anchor points on the left side and just nudge that across two or three times. Using the direct selection tool, 
Again, select the top points and make sure it matches up to the top part of the E. And then once it matches up, hold down the shift key and use the up arrow key to nudge it up 10 pixels. And then do the same for the bottom part, nudging it down 10 pixels. And I think for the L, I'm going to tuck this in at the bottom. Once the logo is complete, there's just a few things we need to do, mainly on the S. So if you select the S and the two extra shapes we added earlier, and then using the Pathfinder tool, hit the Unite option. And then while the letter is still selected, if you press A on the keyboard for the direct selection tool, you'll be able to see all the anchor points. And what we want to do is just remove these extra points which have been added. And we can do this by pressing the minus key on the keyboard and then select the two anchor points on the sides. And then there's one at the bottom. And this will just make sure that the shape when we add the 3D extrude is just a lot more cleaner. Finally, the last thing we want to do is just make a selection around each one of the characters. Go to object and then just group those together. And before we add the 3D extrude settings, we just want to change the color from black to one of the other colors. I'm just going to go with the blue color. And then go to effect and then go to 3D and materials. And you want to go down to the bottom where it says 3D classic. And then we want to use the extrude and bevel classic. From within the window that pops up, we want to set the X axis to 30, the Y axis to one and the Z axis to zero. And then we want to change this perspective to 100 and then just increase the extrude depth to 70 and then press OK. Now the 3D effect has been applied. We need to expand its appearance and we can do this by going to object, expand appearance. And while everything is still selected, we want to go over to the Pathfinder tool and just select the trim option. And that'll just get rid of any overlapping shapes. And again, while it's still selected, just go to Object, Ungroup to ungroup each of the shapes. And you should see within the Layers window that all the individual shapes are on their own separate layers. We can now start to regroup our elements to make it easier to manage. So make sure you've got the selection tool selected and then we just want to select all the front faces. And I'm doing this whilst holding down the Shift key and then go to Object group and for now I'm just going to give this a temporary colour and then we want to select all the side faces and group those together and again I'm just going to give this a random colour just so we can see what's been grouped together and what isn't and then finally we can select all the bottom shapes and group those together and a quicker way to do this specifically for the last color is select the first one and then go to select same fill color and that will select all the shapes that are the same color and then we can just go to object group and then just change the color to something nice and bright so we can see if anything has been missed before we get too deep into the tutorial i just wanted to introduce you to craft kit the ultimate asset pack for minecraft enthusiasts CraftKit includes three unique textiles, plain, shiny and cracked, which can give your text a different look and feel depending on your preferences. But that's not all, CraftKit also features seven different materials for your text, including diamond, enchanted and netherite, which can add even more personality and depth to your designs. CraftKit has all the essential characters you need from A to Z, numbers 0 to 9 and 19 different symbols. Plus, it offers a wide range of vector tools, weapons and in-game items which can help you create amazing graphics and illustrations with ease. But the most exciting feature of CraftKit is the official CraftKit font. With this font you can type text like any other font. This is a game changer for Minecraft content creators as it can make your videos, websites or social media stand out and look more professional. CraftKit is a must have for any Minecraft fan who wants to take their content to the next level. Whether you're a YouTuber, a streamer, a designer, or just a Minecraft enthusiast, CraftKit can help you create authentic and impressive graphics and text. Get your hands on CraftKit now and unleash your creativity. I'll leave a link in the description below. With that said and done, we can now start adding some of the colors to our text. So firstly, selecting the pink, which is the front faces of our letters. 
and then switching the fill type over to a gradient fill and the gradient direction we want to change to 90 degrees and then the black gradient slider we want to color pick the light blue color and then for the white gradient slider we want to select the lightest blue color next we want to select the side faces which is the ones colored in yellow and then we simply just want to color pick the darkest blue color and then we want to select finally the green bottom faces switch the solid fill over to a gradient fill and then we want to switch this around so the lightest blue color we want to change to our darkest blue color and then the other blue color we want to switch to the other darkest blue color then finally using the direct selection tool which is shortcut and the keyboard select the L side shape select the color picker tool using the shortcut I and then just color pick the bottom gradient and that should transition darkest to lightest just on the side of the L and we also want to repeat this for the top part of the E top part of the D and the top part of the S and again, just using the color pick tool and just color picking that gradient fill. Next, make a selection around everything and go to object group and then hold down the alt and shift key and drag a duplicate of the shapes. Make sure the shape selected and then using the pathfinder tool, you wanna to select the unite option. And then while the shape still selected, change the gradient fill to a solid fill using the darkest blue color and then go to object path offset path and then you want to offset the path by around five pixels and then reselect everything and then hit that unite option again within the pathfinder tool then right click the shape and go to arrange center back hold down the shift key and select the group loose the shift key and then click on the shape again which should highlight it all pink and then using the alignment options, you want to horizontally and vertically align center. And what that will do is it will send the border behind the text. In this next part, we're going to add the little white squares on top of each letter. And because the 3D text has a certain perspective to the letters, what we need to do is grab the rectangle tool and simply create a rectangle above each letter. So I create the first one and then I'm just holding the Alt and Shift key to make a duplicate and then I'm moving it above each one of the letters. And this is just so we can add the 3D extrude settings to get the same perspective as our letters. Once you've created all the squares, select all of them and then go to Object Group and then go to Effect. 3D and Materials, 3D Classic, Extrude and Bevel Classic. And then we want to use the same settings as we did with our text. So 30, 1, 0, 100. And then for the Extrude Depth, we want to set to 0. And then press OK. And then go to Object, Expand Appearance, Object, Ungroup. Starting with the letter L, what we want to do is select the square hold down the alt key and then drag a new instance of that shape resize it down fill it with the color white and then change the opacity to about 50 percent and then we just want to position this somewhere within a letter and then you just want to keep duplicating the shape and then randomly positioning the squares over the letter once you've done your first letter then you simply just want to move on to the next one again so select the shape hold down the alt key and drag a new instance of that shape fill it with the color white and then you can obviously change the opacity to 50 or you could even go as low as 25 and just keep positioning the squares along each letter Once you've added all the squares, you can make a selection around all the original squares and then just hit the delete key. 
with the Legends text now complete, we can now move on to our Minecraft wording. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the color to the one of the gray colors. Make sure the text is selected and then go to Effect, 3D Materials, 3D Classic and then Extrude and Bevel. Now the settings you want to use for the Minecraft text are 33, 1, 0, 100 and then for the extrude depth we're just going to make this slightly bigger and change that to 100 and then press OK and then we want to go to object expand appearance while the text is still selected we want to select the trim option and then go to object ungroup and if we just check our layers window just to make sure that all those shapes are ungrouped and then it's essentially repeating what we did with the legends text so selecting each of the front faces and then go to object group and then we want to select all the bottom faces and group those together and let's just change the color just so we can see if we've missed anything which i can see we've missed here and then finally we want to select all the remaining faces and then group those together and again I'm just going to give this a different colour just so we can see if we've missed any once everything's grouped up then we can start adding our colours so for the side shapes we want to use the colour black for the bottom shapes we want to switch the solid fill to a gradient and then we want to change the top colour blue to the dark grey and then the lightest colour blue to black and then for the faces we want to switch that to a gradient fill and then change the black colour to the darkest grey or the lightest dark grey and then the final colour switch to the lightest grey. Next make a selection around everything and go to object group Hold down the Alt key and drag a new instance of, of the shapes. Select the Pathfinder tool and then hit the Unite option and then go to Object Path, Offset Path and then we want to offset the path by around 5 pixels. Remake a selection around everything and hit the Unite option within the Pathfinder tool and then change the colour to black. While the shape's still selected, right click and go to arrange centre back. Hold down the shift key and select the Minecraft text group. Loose the shift key and then click on it once. That should highlight everything in pink. And then using the alignment options, you want to select horizontal and vertically align centre. And that should send the border behind the text. And then finally, we just want to select everything and go to object group. And we can also do the same with our legends text. So make a selection around everything and then go to object group. Once everything's grouped together, then it's just a case of moving and resizing the Minecraft text to fit at the top. Once you're happy with the position, make a selection around everything. So both text shapes go to object group, horizontally and vertically center the group within the artboard. And then we can just make that a little bit bigger. Using the rectangle tool, create a rectangle the same size as the artboard, so 1920 by 1080. And again, we can just horizontally and vertically center that within the artboard. Right click, go to arrange center back, and then we can swap the solid fill with a gradient fill. Change the gradient type to a radial gradient, and then we can just color pick some of our blue colors that we used for our text. And there you have it. You've just learned how to create the legendary Minecraft text effect in Adobe Illustrator. With this new skill, you can now add a professional touch to your Minecraft videos and make them stand out. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. If you did, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more design and creative tutorials. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.